So alhamdulillah, so we're going to begin, inshallah. We, we welcome everyone to Muslim Adolescent Identity Development, our course. Where, um, and I want to ask you all the question, you know, just uh, quickly. How's the reading going? <laughs> some, some of it's a little dense. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Self-determination theory, huh? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, no, we're going to we're going to unpack it, you know, definitely. No, we're going to unpack it. We're going to go through it. We're going to break it down inshallah. So I'm going to stand up. If I if I continue sitting, I'm going to fall asleep. Okay? If you all don't mind. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. Definitely. Okay. So bismillah. So we're going to start it off inshallah. So, so this is our introduction. So we're going to start off with the story of Handala, right? Have we heard of Handala? al Usayyidi. So this particular figure, alhamdulillah, he was a scribe of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa And he one day came out saying, I am what? A hypocrite, right? And he would say it in third person that Handala is a hypocrite. And he ran into Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, radiallahu anhu, who also mentioned it. He wanted to know why. And he says that when I am in the presence of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa it's as if I see heaven, if I, it's as if I see Jannah and Jahannam, right? But when I go back around my family, you know, and then I get caught up in other worldly matters, right, he's finding a switch within his self. Right? So he feels that he's a hypocrite because of the two feelings that are attached to two different environments. Okay? So this is telling you something about the self, that the self is attached to the environment, who you are around, what you see, which is senses, that this speaks to the, your interior. Right? So you have Hamdallah, he went to the Prophet وسلم, and told him just this, him along with Abu Bakr as Siddiq go to the Prophet وسلم, with the mindset thinking that they are hypocrites, right? And the Prophet وسلم, upon hearing uh, his explanation, saying that when I'm around you, it's as if uh, we see um, uh, Jannah and Jahannam, uh, paradise and hellfire in your descriptions. And then when we go back around our family, there's another type of feeling. We get lost in worldly matters. And the Prophet ﷺ, just to shorten it, he said there's a time for this and there's a time uh, for that. So we have these moments, and I want us to really begin to pay attention. This is how we connect to our young people. Pay attention to your feelings and your environments. We're going to do a, a, a quick circle right here. Right? Our icebreaker today is recall a time when you felt highly spiritual or religious. What was the contributing factor to that feeling? Okay? So we just need a few people. Recall a time. All of us have moments and we have a, a group of people. For example, there's a group of people. I'm not going to name any names. When I go around them, I feel highly religious. Right? I feel like um, you know how we say, I feel like I'm deaning, right? <laughs> now, when I go around another group of people, you know, I have to use different language, right? There's not as many, alhamdulillah, probably more astaghfirullah uh, around this group, right? So you find that there's a different feeling attached to different social networks, okay? So... Let us share. Recall a time when you felt highly spiritual or religious. What was the contributing factor to that feeling? Who's first? We can't get everybody on this one. Um, when I felt like I had problems with some of the friends, mm. and I was high on the fact that like, this is the message that I'm trying to mm. 
then you met the Muslims. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, 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 no. We, yeah, we, we, we talk about that later. Alhamdulillah, Muslims are beautiful people, you know, and we, we embody that beauty in this room, so. Okay. <laughs> So that made you feel just, yeah. Yeah, alhamdulillah. Okay. Yes. We have a, a few more, and then we're going to get some people on Zoom. Yeah. I was thinking about, uh, we had an opportunity to go to uh, Istanbul, mm. and I noticed there that, like, how we'll paint or lacquer a table on the top, mm -hmm. but on the bottom it'll be blank. Mm. They didn't have that because they were doing it because of the law, and so to know that they, they try to perfect everything about mm. what they did, mm. and that resonated with me. Mm. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. That was excellent. Excellent. We're going to move on. This is our agenda for today. So we're going to begin by building the foundation. We have to build this, uh, you know, foundation and, you know, talk about some of the challenges of the uh, Muslim community in the West and also approaches to modern, uh, you know, Western uh, psychology. Um, and we're, we're going, this is very important that we start off right here and then we're going to move on to, um, Islamic psychology, is there an Islamic psychology, or is it Islam and psychology? The nafs, we're going to visit. What is the nafs? And the psychological self, okay? So it's important that we, you know, we're going to do some scaffolding here. It's important that we build a foundation before we get bombarded with all of these modern uh, Western uh, social psychological theories, okay? So this is important. So we're gonna, let's build this foundation, okay? So. Excuse me. Will yeah. you provide these as notes or do you need to take them? I'm, I'll, I'll provide this, this is yours, okay. you know, oh. yeah. But take notes anyway, <laughs> you know. <laughs> you know, it, it'd be good, you know. You don't wanna just rely on this stuff right here. So. The Islamization approaches to modern Western psychology, okay? So what we are delving in uh, with the theories that we're studying is this is interdisciplinary. So we are putting in conversation, uh, in particular, sociology and also social psychology. And I'll tell you all my journey uh, and, you know, how I ended up, you know, um, you know uh, going into those two fields. Now, when we think about uh, modern Western psychology, um, the Muslims, alhamdulillah, um, they have been for the last four decades trying to get a grasp on really developing or uh, the Islamization of modern Western uh, psychology. So you have these three approaches, okay? So one is the Islamic filter approach, okay? Islamic filter approach. Everyone say the Islamic filter approach. Islamic filter approach. Okay, so Islamic scholarship that analyzes modern Western psychology through a critical Islamic lens while paradoxically still utilizing the Western psychological framework, okay? And then we have the Islamic psychology approach. Everyone say the Islamic psychology approach. Okay, derives Islamic psychology from Quran and Sunnah and takes the philosophical works and psychiatric techniques of early Muslim scholars as the secondary sources of Islamic psychology to add the missing spiritual component to Western psychology and psychiatry. Okay, and then we have the comparison approach. Everybody say the comparison approach. So holds Western psychological theories and concepts as equal with Islamic primary sources. Which methodology are we utilizing for this course? Can you give us an example of each one, please? Okay. 
But first, which method are we? Okay. C? Some say B. Okay. No one says A? Yeah, I want to, we're going to get into it. From the readings, from the discussion that we had, ha, have had already, which approach are we using? Okay, A from the Zoom group, huh? Okay, okay, and then from our group here, I hear a lot of, uh, let me see, okay. I would say we haven't yet actually had like any of these approaches, but they're generally reading. Yeah. 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 